Okay, let's start. Uh, now, uh, Stefan Pop, uh, uh, co-founder and managing director at Sofron Engineering, will um, will have a talk about lessons learned from the platform migration project. Hello, Stefan. Hello. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah. So I start right away. So. Yeah, my name is Stefan and I'm here now in Yerevan for two years already. I have here my company, Sophon Engineering. And you have heard uh, quite a lot of uh, more or less data science topics. I mean, I was listening to other, other talks too. So some of them uh, have a very scientific uh, background with a lot of statistics. Uh, the ML flow, the last one, was a little bit of data science, a little bit of mixture with data engineering already. And here, uh, my talk is, is uh, I would say, almost exclusively data engineering, data, data platform uh, uh, related. Um, and now you might wonder why does it matter for, for people uh, who work with data science? Um, to hear uh, a talk about data platforms. I mean, this is a, is a complete legit uh, question. Uh, and the answer is simple to, to come right away to the end without uh, a data platform, there is no AI project, as simple as it is. I mean, okay, there is maybe uh, a prototype and you can uh, use the cloud to spin up something, you can, create your uh, prototypes, but the reality is that basically you want to uh, have your prototype put into production, your, da your data product into production, and for that, you need a data platform, as simple as is. And uh, me, uh, like people like me, I mean, I'm very passionate about AI and data science, and I, I want to also, of course, create my products. But I make my money most like most out of um, migrating data platforms from one platform to another. And the basic reason why this is the case is because in, in every every company that you work with, they have a history, unless it's of course a, a new startup or something that has been founded for two years. But they have been in the business for for 30 years or longer. And and they started with uh, DB2 mainframes, and now they got then a, quite a historically grown data platform. And this is also uh, then the next thing. So basic. So if you really, uh, this is the, the reality. As a uh, uh, some image I took from the internet, what uh, data scientists do them uh, most of the time, and if you can ignore the, the data platform topics as as is. Uh, Basic, so, so you risk that uh, instead of already 20% of working really at the core, uh, nice, interesting things with data, uh, uh, grading models, uh, interpreting data, you might end up worse because you not just have to clean and organize your data, but you have to also make sure that uh, the models are run fast. You have to co apply quite a lot of hacks uh, to get data from legacy platforms. And in worst case, and we have seen this, um, yeah, project gets canceled. So um, as I said, um, the question is, what is legacy? I started already talk about it. Um, in a way, you can't wait for the perfect solution. So sometimes you have to make a decision and you have to say, yes, this is the platform I go for and I will, implemented in my uh, business. And no matter which kind of businesses you think of, it's, if it's the finance industry, telecommunication, uh, industry, production industry, they all have their own uh, yeah, systems where they store the data. And when they are 30 years ago, decided to go for uh, IBM mainframe or Oracle, they might not be happy these days or if, if they, yeah. And, and, and so basically at some point you have to choose and you have to be always aware if at some point the systems you have, they simply get outdated. So somebody, so there is something more newer and, and, and better. 
So just, uh, I mean, the, the biggest parad paradigm shifts that we had in the past, large mainframes uh, from IBM in the 80s. And uh, I remember very, very much when we set up the clusters with multiple servers, we were very proud that we do multi-tiered architectures. We said, hey, we separate the web from um, backend. Hey, that's great. This was the state of the art. And then people said, yeah, service-oriented architectures. And we were all very proud of it. Then in the, in the millennium years, uh, we basically said, okay, let's virtualize hardware, let's have VMs. And uh, with that, we reduce costs because we, we use hardware multiple times. And now in the state of the art is, is application virtualization through containers. So Kubernetes, microservice, serverless, um, it's a complete different paradigm. I would. I would even say that what we're doing now with the, the, the migration to cloud native uh, platforms, this is like, I always say this is like uh, classical physics to modern physics. Yeah, it's like a completely paradigm shift in IT. So um, it really matters a lot because um, the old ways of doing things in, in, in corporates, and this is what, what we are confronted with if, if we do B2B uh, business. And also if even if we have a product and we want to integrate it, into a, a B2B world, um, basic, there is something that, that's not there because if you, if you look at a modern IT platform, we have uh, isolated services that are stateless. This means we can scale them very easily. So the old uh, structures, they have a stateful and this means if, if you want to scale them, it's always the question who owns the state and, and who manages the state. And then you have all this a uh, situation where uh, of concurrency, where there's an update, the other other platform didn't get it. So the modern uh, IT pl platform, uh, I say always, cultures get more 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 diverse, and we live in a in a in a culture of IT diversity. So we have polyclose storage, uh, cloud deployments, and everything in a way is designed for AI, because what is data science, if not experimental. Science, this, this is what it says. It's, you're, you're not sure about the outcome. This is, you have to create exp experiments, you have to create your hypothesis, and you have to verify it. And, and sometimes it happens that you need uh, quite a lot of resources now, and it might also happen that you come to the conclusion that your theory uh, is not valid. And what do you do with the hardware then if you realize, okay, maybe your model or your idea had a flaw and you can't continue with it, so you purchased all this, 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 this hardware and now what to do with the hardware. That's why a lot, uh, so AI is very much uh, in favor of cloud development where you simply rent resources, you use them, and if you don't use, need them anymore, basically you yeah, drop them again. And this is the bitter reality. Uh, companies are not ready for it. Um, it's not just, I mean, if I would talk about the processes and the, the management and the B2B workflows as well, then I could talk for one hour or more because then we see that, that there's a lot of things that goes even beyond platform. Yeah, but, but uh, so that management, management doesn't understand what to do with data that you need to explain them. It's not like something you purchase and you get it, but, but, but that you have to have go through iteration. You have to refine models. So uh, this would be another topic, but the, the fact is that the reality out there, and uh, I, I will also tell uh, some stories about companies who actually wants to do data science and what the limitations are. Um, so they, what they face. Uh, so um, there's, I, I want to right away start with, um, uh, let's say some, some call it war story. Of course, I can't disclose any client names and I also don't want to talk too much about the, the environment because maybe people could guess. So uh, for one of the client, we had the situation that um, they had this limited hardware uh, in place. Um, and of course, they were not designed to scale. They were, there was a no cloud, uh, no cloud policy. And they had very rare uh, GPUs. Uh, so, so they had only two uh, nodes with GPUs. And, and there was a very ambitious data scientist who, who very proactively um, 
yeah, uh, ran uh, models and, and very often it happens that when suddenly some other uh, data scientists want to run a, this, uh, uh, some calculation as well. So there was no hardware available because this, this data scientist was using all the hardware. And my job was then to, to, to create some kind of monitoring system to find out if, who, who is using mo the most of the GPU. So this is, let's say, this kind of paradigm you want to fight as a, as a, as a data scientist or as data professional as, as such. And uh, you have to, a data platform is nothing uh, just else than getting the clients away from this old school, old uh, platforms to a new scalable, mostly cloud native environment. And also you have, and this also means you have to, to, to change the perception of how to, to work with platforms. So this means there are some paradigms. It, uh, you should never, as a data scientist, ask for, uh, need to fight for hardware because it simply should be there because you have a cloud environment, this kind of things. So this is in a way we have to set the, 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 the vision, but also we have to do the, 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 the dirty work. Um, what I, uh, I would like to also to tell a little bit about uh, as it, what, uh, as it called, lessons learned from platform migration projects, because I do this quite, quite, quite a lot. Yeah? So this is my main business in a way to get people from A to B and uh, yeah and also it's 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 a long-running project so so you can make a good business out of it it's of course not so interesting for most of the people because you don't create something new but it's it's really it's good so uh, here are some some kind of um, I would call them typical scenarios that I meet um, uh, so uh, one of type of the client that I always encounter and um, is this kind of do-it-yourself jobs. So uh, some people call it also the not invented here syndrome, meaning um, they want to create everything from the scratch. They, they, uh, and what's typical for this kind of clients is uh, they they don't uh, want to spend money on anything. So they, uh, the typical thing when you talk with people like uh, Hadoop since beta and um, sometimes a good example that I, with one of the clients, they were saying, yeah, once a new Hadoop version is out, we, we're working on beta actually because everything what's, what's, what's in production is too old for us. So this was one of the statements I heard from uh, someone in finance industry which wanted to use production data. So um, these kind of companies, uh, the general pattern there is they are always behind their competitors because the challenge is uh, when you do everything yourself, you lack of experts. So it happens that you're, there's some, something is missing. The network expert that sets up the, the, the network in your on-premise environment or maybe someone who understands operating system so this is this is what i see that these these companies are struggling a lot to get forward and and very often they they they, they, they waste a lot of time by just trying things out that then they have to, to revert so this is the, the one, one kind of category the, the google imposter is the next kind of category that i often may encounter so these are companies uh that they want to always be the, the most modern system they don't care even if it if it matches so these are the people that say, okay, we need big data, give it to us big data. And they don't even ask, do I have the data for big data? So uh, the um, amount of companies uh, that installed Hadoop uh, because simply it was a cheap, but very promising technology and that later on had to migrate away from Hadoop. I think I have uh, I've seen this at least 10 times with a very uh, clients where you would not, not expect it. Yeah. So these companies, uh, they, uh, they say if it's not modern, if it's not new, then, then it's, it's, it, it's not interesting. So they waste a lot of money because very often they buy um, something they don't need. So I have seen uh, a lot of companies with idle running modern systems somebody purchased because uh, some account manager from some vendor said you need it and they were never able to use it they, they don't have even the data and they have never an idea what to do so this is the second category of companies that 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 i find uh then another thing this is i think maybe even the most common thing i mean 
as a as a as a data architect or as a as a decision maker in a, in a business company it's not an easy job because you have to make at some point a decision for what kind of technology you will go for because uh, there is somebody who wants to implement implement your bi your data science use cases so you have to make a decision at some point and and very often the, this is a, a little psychologically what happens with people so they um, yeah especially if people coming from a non-technical environment believe me that dozens of IT managers who have a completely different background so uh, especially in, in public sectors where suddenly people from with a legal background get IT managers so it's crazy sometimes yeah or some people where had been uh, uh, finished their IT studies 20 years ago and now they switched into management for 10 years ago and they have no clue what has changed yeah? So a lot of uh, IT managers uh, try to solve this problem by simply getting a contract with a big company that, that, that promises everything to solve everything. And this is the, the famous vendor locking. So what happens is that these companies uh, make a contract uh, and this, this, this symbol here is, 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 is really typical and they are bound to contract. So there's um, a saying, I mean, I, I don't know if it's true, but but, but this is saying that, that the Oracle that makes more money by suing its, its clients than, um, than actually selling licenses. Uh, um, so there is uh, definitely um, a rumor that basically this, this clients, uh, this, this solution integrators like Oracle or Teradata uh, and many others who, who sell these this big appliances and they had, they had a very good business in the past have very complex contracts and it's very difficult to get out and it's very difficult to, to, to make, migrate away from it. So when we face this kind of uh, situations, um, the first thing is always you have also to look, it's uh, not just on the technical things, how to get away from it, but also on the contracts, what kind of contracts do they have, uh, what, what is, how you can lead them out. And, and, and very often, and this we experienced also uh, a lot, is, is then the Hadoop to the rescue uh, and, and then uh, suddenly you have the situation that people start to migrate from uh, a platform that is designed for fast data access to some, something that is completely um, yeah, on the contrary to the, to the use case that they try to solve. Another thing, and, and maybe this is the most dangerous uh, category of, of client that I've seen, is the delayer. And here also a war story. So, um, and this is some years ago, this was even before I went to Armenia. So at some point um, we met a client and we said, yeah, can you migrate, um, uh, can you create a, our solution on a modern system? Uh, because we have a mainframe and yeah, and we need to get away from this mainframe and, 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 and with this talk, we, we talked okay yeah of course we can do it and, and this was like a company that was uh, back then at v visual basic six and this visual basic six was already far outdated so there were far more modern options there so they never made a te te technology shift they always stick to, to, to the thing that's very old and then later we found out that uh they already, the, the vendors that they had, whether the hardware, whether the whole data platform was on, was already, the vendor was already bankrupt for 10 years. So they actually, they buy replacement parts on eBay, put this in their mainframe uh, servers. And then uh, at some point there were no, no, no parts left from at eBay. And so they had to migrate. And this is, this is where, where you can say that IT departments risk their their existence uh, it was hugely expensive for them to make, migrate away so um i assume most of you so are data scientists uh, or data engineers and so the question now that that we are faced is what are common practices uh even if you're not a data engineer and a data scientist it might happen that you come to the situation, you get a contract with, let's say a company and you face this kind of situation. Uh, and what is, what is normally 
uh, the best way to deal with the thing. So these are now a collection and the final part, the, the some do's and don'ts we encountered in our countless uh, migration projects. And these are of course um, only small advices, but, but they're very useful. Um, the first thing we encounter is when you come to this situation, it's very tempting to right away come with a solution. We have had this, uh, so the client says, well, I have a platform X and I want to go to platform Y. And then, but the, but, uh, the, the biggest mistake you can actually do is, is to right away say, yes, we do it. Uh, you have to ask questions. You have to ask a lot of things like how much data, how is the data structured? What is the expectation of your users? This is hugely important. Are your users happy to wait some seconds or not? Because this is uh, alone, these questions eliminates a lot of technologies on your uh, decision tree for a, a data platform. And what do they have? So another client we have, so wants to migrate away from um, a, a relational based database and and at some point, uh, I, I wasn't sure should I ask, should I not ask, but then I, I asked, and this was good to ask, ask, can you show me a sample query that you have? And it turned out to be a SQL uh, query that was historically grown, and it had, I think it didn't have 800 lines, but up to 600 lines. So, because with complex joins and with complex uh, mechanism and, and far too complex, and the thing is, if this is barely running on one platform, if you migrate it to another platform, it will not work there. It's, 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 hardly, it's, it's almost impossible because the dialects of these this databases and these platforms are different. So there is something that doesn't work out. So what you have to do instead is basically you have to refactor the old platform first before you, you can even think of migrating. So this is one of the, the best practices. Don't make early promises, avoid silver bullets. This is the, the next thing. So uh, if there is one rule of thumb for, for platform migration is that it can get very unpleasant for you because in, in general, the client doesn't want to pay too much for a platform migration and he expects fast results. And if you then come and you expect, you give him the promise of fast results, uh, the, the client is often very angry because um, because he actually he gets the same thing as before in a way from functional point of view, maybe not from non-functional from performance, but but from 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 value, and he has to pay for it. So and the famous Hadoop trap, uh, and this is uh, uh, we have seen often. So is that that people, especially those who are in a vendor login, hope that Hadoop solves all the problems. And at the moment uh, we have seen this so often, and Hadoop is completely in decline because of this. Uh, when, you, when I talk with other uh, experts, some people say they have never seen a successful Hadoop case. I mean, I've seen something that was working out, but I've seen companies that have Hadoop and they never put things in production as well. So Hadoop can be uh, a really disaster, because, uh, but it's not just because, I, I wouldn't say that Hadoop is bad, but the thing is that a lot of people thought that there is an open source variant out there it solves all the problems, so let's go for this, this platform. That's why a lot of uh, things also have to has a bad reputation. Um, another good thing is, as I said, um, and, and, and here you see this is all uh, recommendation that are non-technical because, uh, and maybe if there's another thing that I, as a, um, um, I would like to, to emphasize is, Technology doesn't solve problems. Um, this is, uh, I'm a, a vivid technologist and I love technology. So, so I, I'm very keen to dry up my things. I install uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, the latest versions always, uh, when I find some new. Uh, so uh, if there's uh, a new cloud technology out there, uh, I, I want to, to right away use it and, and try it out. So uh, if you watch, for instance, with a cloud guru, uh, AWS this week, and this is then, then, then something new is out, I want to use it right away. But this is, uh, in a way, um, the, the completely wrong approach uh, because, in a way, yet in the end, you have to use technology, and, and, but you have to stay pragmatic. Uh, sometimes 
clients want, um, you have to use whatever is working. So it doesn't bring you anything if you get a client to use the cutting edge, the state of the art data platform, if it doesn't have people to maintain it and if it doesn't want to pay for maintenance. So imagine you have people only uh, with a, who has an internal workforce, they only know SQL, but no programming. So uh, you migrate them and, and, and then suddenly they have to pro program in Python. So, uh, so, so you have to stay pragmatic and you have to understand really where your client are before you can start the techno te technology uh, case. And as I said, cloud to the rescue, but also here be aware, uh, cloud is not a silver bullet. Cloud comes also with a lot of costs, but, but here I'm talking here uh, from the data science perspective, and that's why I, I dare to use the, the slogan cloud to the rescue. Um, because in the end, what I always see is when you want to do your B2B data science project, very often uh, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get into a client uh, environment. So I've seen um, quite a lot of uh, complex scenarios, high security requirements. And the best thing is if you um, go a hybrid approach, and this is also very much into my next, to the next talk, uh, hybrid cloud. Um, so hybrid approach is very often. So you have your data on a on-premise platform, but you, you export it anonymized to the cloud, run the, uh, your uh, experiments, show the, the, uh, the use case, and then with that, you basically can convince that your, your, uh, your data science case works. But most likely, if the, 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 the IT cl the client is old school, it will still take you six months to get into production, but at least you can, can, can show the case. So that's it. Um, I have question, room for one or two questions, and then there is Bernhard who will uh, tell you about hybrid cloud. Okay, uh, thank you, Stefan for the presentation. Actually, I have one question. Uh, is there any other solution we anticipate now that will replace Hadoop or maybe that will overcome the Hadoop's existing problems uh, that will uh, come in the near future? Um, Kubernetes, I think, so, I mean, it's not said that, that Hadoop is bad. It's just um, most companies believe uh, they have to use Hadoop and they don't have a Hadoop use case. Hadoop is perfect if you have huge amount of unstructured data. And very often companies, they don't have the amount of data so that Hadoop pays off. Uh, what I see is that a lot of people now see the hype in Kubernetes. So they say uh, instead of uh, using um, Hadoop use Kubernetes, but also here, I mean, you have to be careful. So in the end, the, 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 goal, the rule of thumb is always understand what you have to do and then look for the platform who can do it for you. And, and, and then you, of course, have to align for the paradigm open source or not open source. But also my, my point is it's very rare that open source is really for free. So if you, if you, even if you use Hadoop, I mean, you still have to, to pay a, a distributor. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see we have other questions, but uh, uh, as we are uh, currently run out of time, yeah, uh, on Slack. They, yeah, on Slack they can ask, uh, they can uh, post questions on the Slack. So thank you very much, thank Stefan, you very much. for the presentation.